Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Like 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship this evening. Our reading is from the book of James, the second chapter, verses 14 through 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith apart from works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening for our last, Advent, uh, last Lenten uh, Wednesday worship services where we've been exploring the, the theme again and again and how that relates to hunger. And tonight we're going to talk about action. And when I think about faith in action, I am always led to the book of James. And some of you might say, well, that's not very Lutheran of you, Pastor Dan, because Martin Luther himself had a great um, took up a great issue with the, with the book of James. And, and today's passage is one of the passages that Martin Luther struggled with. You see, uh, for Luther and for what we believe as Christians, uh, we are justified, uh, we are made right with God freely by God's love. Um, and that there's nothing we can do to earn that love. Instead, it's a gift freely given to us. So there's no work that we can do that justifies ourselves or our salvation. Rather, salvation is a free gift. Now, some Christians in the past have taken advantage of this concept and said, well, if I don't have to do anything to earn salvation, I don't have to do anything right? I don't have to be a nice person. I don't have to seek out uh, those who are on the margins and, and provide them with comfort and support and, and work to end their suffering. There's nothing that I need to do. And that's where I get confronted and, and, and that's where I struggle a little bit uh, with Luther's interpretation of James because I truly believe that as a person of faith, we are called to put our faith into action. I think Jesus demonstrates this through the Gospels when, when Jesus uh, commands and commends his disciples to continue the work of bringing uh, the good news of God's love uh, to the world even when Jesus is gone. I think that, that God commands us to do this when we are, are gifted with the gift of the Holy Spirit, when we are anointed as God's people, and we are anointed to something, not just for, we're not just for eternal salvation, right? We are anointed uh, to do things, to, to be uh, co-workers with God in this kingdom of God that's known as earth. And as we engage in this work, this co-working with God, our work is all about sharing God's love with the world. 
and helping to bring in the vision that God has for the creation to help reign in or bring in the reign of the kingdom of God. Now, God invites us to participate in this, not so, not so that we're saved, but in order that we may truly experience life. Because when you put your faith into action, when you share that love with other people, there is no other feeling in the world that can be comparable to that, to sharing love, to proclaiming the gospel, or saying God loves you. So as we are at our concluding week of exploring issues around hunger, this week's key word is action. God invites us as people of faith to put that faith into action in the world to help end hunger. And God works with us along every step of the way. Now there's plenty of ways here at People of Hope that you can put your faith into action to stop hunger. You can volunteer as a, as a member of our garden team and work with Revolutionary Earth, a new mission partner who is helping to provide CSA shares to to lower-income families in our community of Rochester. You can help provide uh, meals uh, for the Dorothy Day Center, uh, a a monthly uh, ministry that we're engaged in that helps to feed the homeless. You can volunteer to to package foods at Channel One, along with a very faithful group of uh, member missionaries here at People of Hope who have engaged in that, that ministry for quite a number of years. You can buy foodstuffs and, and put them in our tiny food pantry, uh, our food pantry that has, has been going like gangbusters since our uh, community, our nation, our world has been racked by the pandemic and, and suffered um, some uh, financial needs. You can always volunteer at the open table uh, food truck. Uh, That ministry has been going on for almost six years now. Who would have thought that? Uh, Providing uh, hot meals uh, to to two of our most in-need communities here in Rochester. You can sign up every Thursday night to volunteer. And those are, are just a few of the ways that we at People of Hope are putting our faith into action. I invite you to be a part of these efforts. I invite you to, to, to not only walk to talk the talk, but to walk the walk. I shared in a Bible study a few weeks ago as we were talking about prayer that, that one of my seminary professors uh, taught me that if I pray for something, if I ask God to do something, I need to be willing to be a part of God's answer to solve that problem. And that's gone with me wherever I've gone. So tonight my prayer is that God end hunger in our world. And through that prayer, I ask that God use each and every one of us to be co-workers with God to do just that. Thanks be to God. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love 
and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us. 